response. So this will have uh, details on what exact set of files um, can the user download. This may be just a subset of files because the user didn't have permission for all the files he requested. Or if they do have permission, then it's going to be um, all the files uh, that they requested. So this is just the metadata. Uh, we haven't really started the, the actual file download yet. Um, one other key component um, as, uh, that is generated as part of this get response is what we call uh, a download ticket. Um, I'll show you more details on how um, the download ticket looks like um, or how we construct the download ticket in the next slide. So once uh, the client receives a GET response. It's it's again a SOAP message. It's going to loop through um, all the files uh, in that list, and then it's going to send the actual download request uh, to the proxy. So proxy in turn uh, will validate download ticket, and then if the ticket is valid, it will try to locate the file in its local cache. If the file is not there, we call it a cache miss, then it will send a download request um, along with uh, the ticket information that it received to the application tier. And then once the, the application tier returns a file, proxy is going to uh, add that file to its local cache. Also, it will return that specific file uh, back to the client. So once the client receives the file, um, it's going to send um, what we call um, update local op version operation. So this is to say that um, this client has successfully um, received this version of the file. Uh, this is more like an acknowledgement um, back to the server. Um, as you can see uh, in this uh, picture, all the the, the metadata exchange uh, takes place directly between the client and uh, the application tier. Only the, the, the actual file download comes to proxy. Uh, proxy by itself doesn't um, store uh, any metadata. It just uh, caches um, multiple um, versions of files. In this slide, um, we'll talk a little bit about how uh, we generate um, the download ticket. Actually, the download ticket is generated on application tier. So first, let's say you, um, as a as a, a TFS client, requested um, a bunch of um, files to be downloaded. <coughs> so the application tier, it's going to kind of create a, a query string format of um, the file ID for each of those files. And then um, it also creates what we call an expiry timestamp, uh, which means like how long this ticket is valid. Uh, by default, um, a generated ticket is valid for 24 hours. As a next step, uh, we generate a hash, um, SHA-1 hash of this uh, query string. And then we are going to um, sign this hash uh, using RSA uh, crypto provider, a private key. And then uh, we base in 64 encode uh, this signed uh, hash string. And then we also add the raw format of uh, the file IDs uh, that we used to construct um, the hash as well as the file ID itself and the expiry timestamp uh, back on the ticket. So this is just a, you don't need to know the all the nitty-gritty details, but this is just to give an idea of um, how the download ticket looks like. Later I'll show you, uh, b when we get onto the demo uh, section, uh, I'll show you some samples of how the, the GET request looks like, a sample GET response, and uh, uh, a sample download ticket, uh, and all that. Um, just one other uh, detail um, on um, this um, the privacy.
private key we use. Um, this private key we store uh, on, the, on the Team Foundation database tier. Uh, it will be generated for the first time uh, when we start the application tier. Um, also, we do have uh, an admin web method um, on, the, um, on the application tier. Um, we call it a generator repository key. That's the name of the ma web method. So this can be used by the administrators uh, if they think that the private key has been compromised um, and then they want to generate um, a new uh, key. Um, we do support um, what we call